Hi everyone, Adam Steele here from Hot Pole Studios and today we're going to be talking about this guitar. You might have seen this guitar on the channel before, but not quite like this. Everything is going to change and this is going to be a long video talking about the upgrade process, thoughts and why. So you may have seen this guitar on the channel before, but if you've seen it before, you'll have seen it with a cream pick guard with three pickups in it in the kind of traditional Strat configuration. Uh, but not quite, because it would have had three different hot rails in it, which are the kind of small humbuckers. I never quite liked the sound of them. And so while I was in lockdown, quarantine, all that kind of stuff, I ordered some parts. So I got these new humbuckers, which are from, uh, they're from Iron Gear. These are Iron Gear's rolling mills. I had a blank for a second there. And I was having issues, which I will describe in the next section, which were things like constantly catching my hand on the volume pot. So let's go into the past by about four or five weeks and show you a sound demo using this exact setup, but in my home because we were all locked down. I literally picked up this rig and took it home because the two notes captor and Carbem made it possible for me to do all this in a small office. Let's mosey on down. <laughs> Okay, so uh, today begins the journey of the upgrade of my old Strat. I've had this forever, and I'm just going to turn that boost off so it's a little cleaner in the background. And the long and storied history of this Strat is I've had this since I was about seven years old. Uh, so best part of 30 years at this point. Uh, but the electronics on it were absolutely shocking they were awful uh, so i had it all upgraded and replaced 10 years ago ish uh with this lot and this was all made by a company called artec so you can actually see a couple of picks horribly taped onto the volume and tone pots and i'll come to explaining that in a second um there is a reason for that but you'll see they're all these uh like hot rails and they're all by a company called Artec, and it's a pretty clever little system. So it's very clever that it's got coil taps for all the pickups, and even uh, a switchable capacitor for the tone on uh, the, so it's three push pull pots. But there are reasons that I want to change things. This, this is my JCM 800 that's under the desk, and I'll show you the settings with a tube screamer on. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds really good. It's using um, so JCM800 into a two notes cap to load box into the cab M with uh, this cab model that you see right in front of me, which is an oversized Marshall two SM57s on it, slightly out of, uh, with each other for that Fredman type sound. Uh, but tracking with this guitar has been a real pain, especially because I'm still in the middle of this lockdown quarantine issue i don't know when this video is going live but right now my guitar collection is limited behind me i have um my partner's old ibanez geo which really needs some looking at uh there's uh my uh custom heart telecaster which has got emgs and is in drop b so that is a metal machine and that is what it is and i'm not changing uh that from being the drop guitar but for, if i want to record anything that's even reasonably normal quote unquote this guitar is the one that i have and it's not ideal for a lot of stuff for the bridge stuff 
it can actually sound quite good because with a, without a boost, it sounds like. <laughs> sounds okay. Sounds pretty decent. But that's with the bridge in humbucking mode. And that's about the only thing that really sounds good on this amp, on this guitar even. If I go to the neck pickup in humbucker mode, it's got a, a weird quality to it. A kind of... If I stomp on the tube screamer... So it, it kind of has that definite strat-ness to it. And if I, ooh, with, that, with less boost, if I single coil it by pulling the pots out, I get a sound that isn't quite stratty enough for me, but isn't quite anything else. So. <laughs> It's weird. It's it's kind of like an ice pick. Uh, the mid pickups no better. This is the mid pickup on Humbucker with. And mid pickup single coil. This is all JCM 800 tones. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to switch to my 5150 to show you what happens on real high gain tones. But uh, I'm completely changing out the electronics again. Uh, but this time I'm doing it with the help of Jack's Instrument Services, who you may have seen on the channel before. Uh, Jack Ellis is very good indeed. And we're doing this lockdown style. So I've planned this out. I'm changing out the entire pit guard for a new one that's going to be tortoise shell. One of the reasons I'm changing out the pit guard is because I'm having new pickups that won't fit. But if I just tap on the top of the pit guard, that's really loud. And if I stick the tube screamer on, that's as loud as the, the notes I'm playing really clearly, which is so loud that makes it unusable it's practically unacceptable i know that with any guitar that's got a scratch plate some noise will be transferred but there's a reasonable limit and that's way beyond that reasonable limit i'll turn that boost off again and so there's that and to explain the horrible uh picks and tape situation there uh whenever i'm doing tracking with this guitar i don't know about you guys but i find that when uh, I'm tracking, I tend to have my hand on the bridge a lot. And the way that I play, my little finger catches on the volume knob a lot. And halfway through tracking, I'll find that uh, the volume's turned itself down and I'm halfway through tracking with hardly any gain. Whether it's clean or a distorted tone, I'm looking over going, I've lost power, Captain. And it, <laughs> it turns out it's because I'm playing and have backed off the volume so what we're going to do is change out everything we're going to have two humbuckers uh made by iron gear uh i'm sending this pit guard without the electronics to jack and jack's going to use that as the shape template for a brand new one uh that's tortoise shell colored uh the pickups and electronics the new set are being sent to him separately i've just ordered those and that's going to have a really cool uh, four-way switch instead of the typical strap five-way. So it's going to have bridge, both uh, neck, then uh, neck and bridge in series rather than parallel. We're getting rid of both tone knobs and we're moving the volume all the way down. So it's way away from my hand, but uh, that's going to be a push push pot, not push pull, so that I can smack it in the middle of the performance. It will pop up. And that will become uh, coil tapped on all the pickups. That's the plan, anyway. So it's going to make it so that the two humbuckers, then the choices are, uh, you know, um, bridge, single coil, uh, both single coil, neck single coil. Uh, uh, then it's going to be the outermost 
uh, rail here and the outermost uh, rail, if you will, uh, on the two humbuckers uh, in series, which is very Telecaster-ish. Let's give you some different tones on this to properly A, B when we come to the comparison when it's sent to us. So here's JCM 800 Tube Screamer Bridge Tone. <laughs> Neck. Let's take a tube screamer on on the bridge with a low sensitivity. So nowhere near as loud through low sensitivity, even with a tube screamer with the volume on full and gain only slightly way up. So let's get that on standby and switch over to the 5150. So now we're really cooking. Now we're on the 5150 on the red channel. Uh, drop D the guitar, we're on the bridge pickup and we get this. <laughs> So it's got lower noise floor, that's a good start. What if I so much as touch that bridge, the pick guard even? There's loads of noise. And it doesn't take away the fact that the uh, volume part is still well in my way. And that that sound is really aggressive, but it's got it's losing a certain uh, chunkiness that you might get with full-size humbuckers, which is where the iron gears are going to uh, make the difference, I think. Yeah, one of the main issues I was having with this guitar is really with lead work, that um, even with the gain this high, It just just doesn't sound right, especially in the neck pickup. This is how the neck solo tone sounds with the tube screamer on. So the bridge pickup sounds really good. But that neck pickup just doesn't have that liquid quality that I was looking for. Let's try it again. There's just something that's not quite right there. And so hopefully the next step is going to be what fixes this whole situation. really see the greys coming out of my hair now. Uh, so, I had to go and get myself my Leatherman from downstairs uh, because, surprise, surprise, all my nice screwdrivers are at the studio. I'm usually there so often that it doesn't matter. I just pick up what I need. In fact, I do most of my work with this kind of thing in the studio, either in the control room or in the storeroom next door, especially if I'm doing soldering. 
because soldering, or soldering as the US viewers call it, uh, produces some nasty fumes and I just happen to have a really nice uh, HVAC system in the studio which goes through the storeroom, so acts as a very effective extractor. Alright, that's all the screws. Let's turn this uh, multi-tool into a cutter. Get rid of these strings. Rip. Alright, here we go. This hasn't been seen in years. So this is the, uh, the cavity. Looks like it used to be a humbucking cavity. Even though this guitar always had uh, all single coils in it, uh, I might have to do a bit of routing here. Uh, looks like I can see where I've uh, knocked a bit out here before. I can't remember why. I think it was to get something to fit. Oh, it was a 9 volt. I originally had a 9 volt battery in here for some reason. It never quite worked. Never quite pulled off. But yes, I will uh, remove the grounding wire here. And like I said, we are removing the jack. So this, for now, is what we need. And so, bye bye guitar for the time being. Uh, so this is what we're looking at. So you see there's all sorts of clever uh, push pull pots. They're all quite cheap, I think. It might be alpha pots. They're okay, but they're they're nothing to write home about. But now what I need to do is get all of this off here, so I can send just the scratch plate to Jack and be like, "Yo, Jack, <laughs> uh, just kind of change stuff up for me, would you?" <laughs> There we go, and that is all coming out. What's quite nice uh, in terms of the electronics in some ways, uh, shielded the absolute bare minimum, as you can see. I'm going to be asking Jack to shield the whole thing so that all the pickups are, are, are shielded rather than just the cavity, because that's uh, not ideal. And I'm going to, at some point, have some copper tape to shield the inside of the guitar as well. Now, this scratch plate is now separate. I can now send this to Jack with some nice uh, instructions and requests, call it what you will, and something will return with some humbucker shapes in it and two knobs missing. So looking forward very much to that. So on to you, Jack. And so here we have the new upgraded machine. And as you can see, it's a lovely tortoise shell, this pit guard, and it's got the two pickups in. I had to do a lot of work with a chisel to make it fit because Jack sent me back just the assembled pit guard. He custom made this pit guard for me, which is incredible. And if you need anything custom done, as in like if you need a new pit guard making that's a specific shape because this isn't a classic fender shape believe it or not this body because this is a copy of a stratocaster it's not exactly the same nothing quite fits so i gave jack the old one which never quite aligned right and i said to him i need these amendments and he made me a whole new pit guard 
based on those amendments that I'd literally just drawn, and my, my drawing skills are poor. And I this now has the volume pot way away from my hand, where the tone pot's supposed to be, and... Sounds great, but also, if I push it, it's a push-push coil tap, so I can get a tiny little bit. I've got this JCM800 quite high gain with a tube screamer, and I can go to a single coil, and I can go... loads of dynamic range without having to try and pull on a push-pull pot and without having to try and play with a toggle switch in the middle of a show. It's also got this really interesting four-way switch which can go from bridge to both pickups to neck but there's an extra setting where it can go through both pickups in series which means that you get a very different sound. It's a bit more Telecaster-ish. I'm just going to knock the gain back a little by turning off the tube screamer. So that's in series. Which is very different to parallel. You can hear how the parallel was a lot more ice picky and a lot more cutting where the series was fatter. Uh, very, very different, and that's with the volume backed off to about three, and that is amazing. Now, next thing on the cards, I told you this was a long video, is that these tuners are absolutely terrible. So, what I'm going to do now, these are the old stock tuners from about 1990, and I want this to be my number one tracking guitar. So, I'm going, oh, I am going to play through the 6505 a little bit, uh, to, so that we have a before and after comparison with the, the pickups. Because these big, fat pickups have a very different sound to those thin blade pickups. Also, I've stuffed this cavity with foam, and then, uh, before that, surrounded the cavity in copper uh, screening foil, which touches the aluminium foil, foil on the top. Uh, underneath the pit guard, which means that it's entirely shielded, which is why without the tube screamer This is a JCM 800 with the gain on 7 Preamp on 6, so loud Volume on full With the bridge pickup on humbucking mode and That's all I'm getting And yet I can just play And that was probably loud enough to clip the overhead mic, but that's the only noise I'm getting. That's some really impressive stuff from some screening. And if I touch, I'm really having to touch the pit guard to get some noise out of it now. Whereas it used to echo like a cannon, which made it unusable. Now I'm really having to make mistakes live to make that kind of, kind of noise. And I think that's a huge distinction. Um, if you've not got any money, you can just get some foam of some kind and just take your pit guard off and stuff the cavities. <laughs> and that should at least press up against the pit guard and stop it from having that hollow ringing sound. That's what I was going to do, but I thought it was going to go the whole hog, so why not? So between the pickups, the copper screening foil, the new, new electronics, new pickups, huge difference. <laughs> Tuning's already starting to slip. Uh, so, let's get these off and put the new hip shot uh, locking tuners on. Let's go for it. Keep saying that. Let's do the 6505 first. Yeah. 
That's without a tube screamer. And with the gain on less than three. If I turn the tube screamer on. That buzzing is just because I'm sat so close to the amp and at a certain angle. Uh, even with the shielding, with the tube screamer into a 5150 or a 6505, you're going to get a bit of that. So, yeah, compared to what we had before, no problem. I mean, if my playing was tighter, that's not the guitar's fault. Alright, let's stop for a minute, because I'm talking to the camera. Uh, I've taken the old tuners off, and the holes are 8mm holes, and I need 10mm holes. It seems that 10mm is the standard, but this was made in some Indian factory about 30 years ago, and they did not care. So, I've come to my dad's house to get the reamer, what is it called? The, yep. the, the drill bit that's specifically designed to bore a hole to be a little bit wider, one of them. Looks a bit like a Christmas tree. It has about the same psychological effect. It's graded up with a different uh, It is diameters. graded up, but it actually says on the side 8mm, 10mm. So I'm going to take the neck off, get the Black & Decker work, mate, and uh, make these holes a bit bigger. There we go, so it's suddenly got 10 mil uh, holes. So. There we go. All done, restrung. I'm gonna cut these ends off because that's a bit horrible. But these are the same set of strings I've been playing for the duration of this video and not a lot else. So they, these are Diodario XTs. They are practically brand new and they sound great. So let's go back to the studio. <laughs> Success! So this is much more in tune than it was before, but we've run into a couple of issues. So the guitar is now spot on, the uh, tuning head, so this nice staggered thing, so there's no more need for a vintage string tree, and because they're locking tuners, I don't need tons of string wrapped around the tuning head, which further increases stability. And the sustain is now amazing. And so on and so on, I'm not going to let that go forever. Uh, but, now, it's time to talk about a little snag. I turned on the 6505 uh, when I came in, and I could smell something. And it smelled bad, it smelled burning. I looked in the back, and two of the four power valves were glowing red! Ah! So, 
instantly put that on standby. That went away. They've been absolutely boiling roasting hot. So something's not right. So this is now going away to an amp tech to get checked out because that's not good. That's more than not good for a pair of uh, power valves to be red plating. Oh dear. And so I'm back on the JCM 800, as you can probably tell. I do wish I could play a little better. But the last thing that's going to be done to this is the tuning is never quite going to be perfect because of the inherent way that people who play quite heavily, and I kind of do, uh, play. And so I'm going to fix that by using an Evertune. This Evertune bridge is going to go on that guitar, but that is a time... A time? That is a topic for another day and another video. And I'm sure if I'm going to take this amp to be repaired, that there will be a video about that as well, because that will hopefully be taken to Roland Lumby in the amp clinic. He's an absolute genius. He'll know what's wrong. Uh, I'll try and film that. That'll be very interesting. So there's two more videos to go on this before my rig is fully finished. And I hope you enjoyed this long, winding, rambling video. Uh, but this is still yet to go. So the Odyssey isn't quite finished. I think uh, it's time to end here though, so if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more of this kind of stuff, as well as more technical stuff, more uh, computer building, more mixing, more recording, more mastering, more Reaper stuff. Uh, check out the Patreon if you haven't already, because that helps us to make more videos like this, because God only knows that the uh, the Patreon money is now going to have to go to fixing fixing this thing. And just check out the Discord where we talk a lot about everything as a little community. Thanks for watching, and I'm Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Hey everyone, that might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server. Link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hot Pole Studios. See you there.